Today, I'm going to talk about the metadata propagation mechanism in Mercari. In order for metadata to be propagated using the middleware, the key format has to be consistent. For example, in our case, we designed for metadata keys to have the propagation in the interpretation semantics and the name. For example, if we name the, the four semantics we talked about as A, B, C, D, the metadata name could be metadata dash one of A, B, C, D and dash the actual name of the metadata. By doing so, the middleware can uh, use regular expression to look at these keys in the request header or in the PubSub case, the body accordingly, and then take the metadata out and convert them and store them to an uh, internal store. You can also know uh, which semantic that applies to the metadata. But for the must be unmodified metadata, we need to guarantee that it's unmodified. In order to do so, we need to sign the metadata. And the signature could be propagated in a similar way using the middleware. And then the middleware can, after propagating the signature, when another service gets the request, the middleware can verify the signature by talking to the authentication service and then proceed to the normal like metadata procedure. In our infrastructure, we generally use protobuf as the communication protocol. Uh, we normally would want each metadata schema to be defined in protobuf and check into the repository, central repository. Uh, however, we don't want to. We didn't want to define a common schema to all of the metadata, across all of metadata. So each of the metadata has defined their own schema. The reason we didn't want to define a common schema is that if there's a use case that needs to introduce a new metadata, we want the format of the new metadata to be designed based on the use case. We don't want the propagation structure to an overall schema to dictate the format of the, the new metadata. And also in some of the cases, it may even make sense for a uh, metadata to not be put above, for example. It may, it may make sense for a metadata value to be a string, or maybe it makes sense for a metadata value to be a JSON serialized uh, string in some cases, instead of a poor above for serialized content. If those things make sense, we want the infrastructure to be generic, to be able to support those use cases. We don't want to restrict too much to only say, you have to only use this format to, to define your metadata. As a re recap, remember that only cross-cutting concerns can define metadata to be propagated not like from a random service to another service. So it's not ever going to be hard to manage. We also defined a metadata registry to record each valid metadata. This could be used as a mechanism to manage approval of new metadata additions to the system. In some of the uh, environments, if you have compliance requirements, this is definitely going to be required. It really doesn't have to be something that's hooked into the system programmatically but it could be, it really depends on the use case. It could be as simple as just a document that tracked each metadata addition and then needs approval of adding things and changing the document, but the real middlewares don't actually consult this document. Or if it's required in the more uh, strict environment, it could be something in the database uh, with the API, the middleware could actually read the values of the registry. And if it's not a valid metadata in the registry, the middleware will error out the request. Such a registry is required, but it could be either way. Since uh, in our case, the metadata values could be in put above, could also be in string, could also be in other format, that's sensible. We uh, standardize by requiring all metadata values to be base64 encoded when it's sent over the wire. We do this because it, sometimes it could be binary data, so it's not necessarily a string serialized format. Also, the ingress from untrusted networks will discard the inbound metadata headers. For example, if the API gateway gets a request and that request already have a well-formatted metadata, say a hacker guessed our uh, metadata format key and then use that correctly when they send the request to the gateway to try to change behaviors, in our ingress, we'll drop those headers and it will have no impact to the system. However, just a note that it's probably not a very good idea to store very, very, very sensitive information in metadata. Given it's just a metadata, it's used by the infrastructure to control the, to provide functionality to the services. It shouldn't fundamentally control 
or leak any data. Even though you should consider the security when you design a metadata structure, it may not be a very good idea to use it for extremely sensitive contents. In the last section, I talked about the internal designs of our metadata propagation mechanism. And in this section, I'm going to talk about some uh, future considerations. The considerations um, I want to discuss today are uh, first handling metadata in deferred operations. And also, the, is it appropriate, is it necessary to propagate metadata in the responses? For handling metadata in deferred operations, let's take a look at this example. If the API gateway gets a request and they attach a new metadata to propagate it to the services, and the first service will get it, and then the service will write what it's supposed to write in the database. At this point, the flow of the metadata is finished. And then we may have a worker that sits along the side of the database that pulls data like from time to time. Once it detects the value it cares about, it will maybe send a request to PubStop, maybe it will send a request to other services. But at this point, it already lost track of the metadata. It's not going to propagate the original metadata set by the API gateway because it's a different workflow. One of the potential solutions that can solve this problem is the necessity of storing the metadata in some metadata store and have some ID that's in the business logic that associate to the metadata in the metadata store. So when the API gateway sends the metadata along with the request to the service, the metadata will be stored in the metadata store together with some form of identifier. And then when the worker pulls the data from the DB, since it has the identifier, uh, you can use the identifier to load the metadata from the metadata store. A concrete example of this could be, for example, when the product is listed on the Mercari platform, the listing process is not only a synchronized call, but like it has some worker that does some background job to, fit, to finalize the listing. Maybe some additional processing, maybe some additional tagging or AI stuff. We, we want the whole process, the whole listing process request chain to be identified in one in the metadata propagation. We want the whole listing process to have the same metadata instead of a different metadata in the middle from the worker. As a result, that's why we need something to be able to handle this deferred operation case to be able to propagate metadata all the way to the end of the actual request. Let's take a look at an example of handling metadata in the deferred operations. Assuming the API gateway gets a request, when it talks to a service and then propagates the metadata all the way to the end and then store whatever it needs to store in the DB, uh, and now this request has finished and a worker sits alongside with the DB, uh, reads something from the DB, and if there's something it cares about, it may then sends further requests down. Uh, let's take a real life example of listing something, listing a product on Mercari. When the listing happens, it's not only just the synchronous call where it pops up messages. It requires a multiple step procedure. When the API gateway gets the listing request, it talks to the service and then stores the information to the DB, and then a worker reads the DB and then starts to talk to other services. From the beginning of this request, when the API gateway gets the request, to the end of the service that the worker talks to is all one workflow. So we want the whole workflow to have the metadata. In the current infrastructure we designed, only the first half would have this, the metadata propagating. And when the worker gets the values from the DB and achieve the second half of the operations, the metadata is lost. Fortunately, uh, in our mission critical operations, it wasn't a problem but it's definitely something to consider in the future. A potential solution would be having a store that stores the metadata and then have some identifier that can link to between the actual data the service is storing versus the, or maybe the request ID to the metadata. And uh, when the service stores something to the DB, it has that identifier. And when the worker reads the information from the DB, it can use the same identifier to then load metadata from the uh, metadata store to further propagate to the rest of the services necessary to complete this request. The other future considerations I wanted to discuss is that it could be useful to propagate metadata in the responses as well. Right now in the infrastructure, everything is one way. You basically you send a request and you can attach metadata in the cross-cutting concerns uh, and that metadata is going to be propagated until the end. But when something returns to the caller, there's no metadata and no infrastructure provides any service to the response. 
it could become useful if at some point some infrastructure we need to look at the response and do something about it based on some metadata in the response if that happens i think it could make sense to also use a similar infrastructure to propagate metadata back out uh, we just need to be careful about data security don't accidentally leak something that shouldn't be sent out to the final caller, external caller, leaving our infrastructure. So when a request leaves, if we ever implement this, if a request leaves our infrastructure, the outbound, the egress should, should also discard all of the, the metadata in the request, just similar to the ingress discarding the metadata from the request, from an external request. So this is all of what I wanted to discuss in this presentation. Hope this presentation is helpful and is applicable to your work. Thank you.